A real hell on earth was created in the Nazi concentration camps. But even in this hell, the Nazis faced a shortage of personnel. Employees from among the prisoners, the so-called capos, were recruited to perform the dirtiest work. Depending on their status, some received the rank of Oberkapo, that is, chief prisoner officer over the others. Unlike the rest of the prisoners of the concentration camps, the Kapos had quite serious privileges. They lived in the same barracks but in a separate compartment, which was fenced, closed and heated. And it was an important privilege, since in winter hundreds and thousands of prisoners simply died from the cold. The Kapos were given the most basic hygiene procedures, better shoes and even ordinary civilian clothing. And of course, the Kapos ate much better since they were engaged in the distribution of rations and could take more for themselves. But for such privileges, couples had to work not out of fear, but out of conscience. Their duties included control over orders in the barracks, distribution of food, and monitoring the work of prisoners. Cruelty towards the condemned was mandatory. Since there were always many applicants for such positions, the competition was quite tough. Therefore, according to the memoirs of prisoners, it was often the couples who showed more atrocities than even the guards and wardens of the concentration camps. In the women barracks, of course, were women couples. The power of couples inside the barracks was practically unlimited. Women couples were often even given batons to make it easier to maintain order. Many female prisoners recall that they were so afraid of their couples that when they entered the barracks, everyone hid under the bunks. For example, at Majdanek, where women's barracks were overcrowded and where the most notorious female wardens operated, the most egregious and cruel prisoners were selected to be couples. These were both criminals and those who ended up in the camps for some other, but not political reasons. Under the supervision of the guards, such women created horrors, as already mentioned, often worse than those done by the camp administration. For example, a rule was introduced not to look at the couple. Otherwise, the offender could be flogged or beaten with a club. The women couples had very serious control over the prisoners going out to work and over the work itself. Often it was they and not the guards themselves who brutally and for no reason beat the exhausted prisoners during their work or just on the way to work. The more atrocities the couples committed, the more likely that their masters would notice such zeal and appreciate it. However, regardless of all privileges, for any misconduct, a female capo could be demoted. In this case, the Nazi could do whatever they liked with the guilty woman. Most often, she was simply thrown back into the barracks, where the prisoners brutally dealt with the victim. Sometimes, by decision of the leadership, the capos who were at fault were killed either by injection or by shooting. But even death for such capos was more merciful and civilized than for ordinary prisoners. However, there were even a few examples of couple women treating prisoners with at least a minimal level of human compassion. During the trial of the administration of the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, one of these couples, Lydia Zuinstein, was among the witnesses who not only refused to commit atrocities against female prisoners, but also spoke out against the actions of one of the camp commanders. When the camp needed to recruit 100 people to work in the kitchen, at least 600 volunteers came out. During the formation, the prisoners could not stand straight. So one of the SS men, Weingartner, began to beat female capo who allegedly was not able to restore order. Lydia Zuinstein, during the Bergen-Belsen trial, told the court. When they failed to restore order, Weingartner fired into the air. At that moment I said in German, I don't want to stay in this team as I don't want to die after suffering so much. Weingartner heard me and he hit me about 15 times on the head with a rubber truncheon, after which I lost consciousness. But again, this was one of the few cases that became an exception. During the same trial, there were 14 other couples in the dock who were convicted of atrocities against prisoners. Also an unenviable fate which in fact was another exception, awaited the woman of the couple in a small and little-known concentration camp in the Polish town of Jadwiga. There, couples recruited from Polish women were not practically distinguished either in relation to prisoners or in privileges. And during the liquidation of Jadwiga camp or after the mass executions, it was the female couples that the Nazis sent in the guest chambers in the first place. 
However, such cases were unique and in general many female couples survived in the concentration camps only because they were couples. So in the Auschwitz camp, there was a mother of two, Hild Lohbauer, who in the status of couple especially distinguished herself in torturing sick and weakened prisoners. Hild even had a special privilege from the management. She was entrusted with several dogs, which the woman with great pleasure let loose on those who could not move or stand up. Moreover, many unfortunate people never got up after such persecution. At the Ravensburg concentration camp, one of the couples was the infamous Carmen Mori. To date, it is not known for what offenses she was sentenced to death in the gas chamber. But thanks to the intercession of her father's friend, the woman was deleted from the death list and continued to serve as a couple in the barracks. From that moment, probably decided to rehabilitate herself, Carmen Mori turned into a real demon couple. She was called the most perverted psychopath, sadomasochist and sexually insatiable woman. The insanity and the atrocities she committed in the camp were justly condemned after the war. Despite an initial rather lenient sentence, Mori was later reconvinced and sentenced to death. Mori's girlfriend was no less cruel and insane, Eugenia Van Skin. Although she did not reach the heights of Mori in terms of atrocities, she still managed to earn herself a reputation among the prisoners as one of the most cruel couples of Ravensburg. In the camps of Ravensburg, Majdanek and Auschwitz, female couples prisoners were essentially equal to wardens. They had more rights in their barracks than anyone else. Whenever they wanted, these women beat the unfortunate, often to death. The duties of the couple included the removal of children from their mothers, after which the babies were often sent to the gas chambers. Actually, the life of a couple in a camp consisted entirely of bullying the prisoners, controlling their work and sending them to the gas chamber or to the firing squad. Therefore, there is nothing surprising in fact that after the war, as has already been said, many women couples ended up in the docks. One of the most famous couples was Elizabeth Wolkenrath, nicknamed the most stupid warden. During her service as a couple, she managed to prove herself so much that she changed her status to the position of overseer. But even as a couple, Wolkenrath was personally actively involved in the selection of prisoners to be sent to the guest chamber. The infamous prisoner couple Vera Selvkwart, working in the camp as a nurse, gave poison powders to female prisoners, saying that it would allegedly give them strength. And when there were no powders, she gave out outwardly good shoes to prisoners when in fact the shoes were poisoned. As a result, the prisoners died in terrible agony. However, despite their privileged condition, the couple women still suffered the real nightmare. The fact is that when the Red Army and Allied forces began to consistently liberate Europe, in many camps the administration simply fled, leaving their henchmen to fend for themselves, and to whom no one cared anymore. And that's when the prisoners took revenge. There is still no complete official understanding of what happened in the camp barracks after the administration fled. However, fragmentary memoirs and some photographic documents give a sufficient picture of what many couple women had to endure on the eve of their release. In general, it is believed that in a rage, women are much worse than men. And if it were women who survived a real hell, from whom children were taken, including newborns, in front of whom children were sent to the gas chambers. Many female couples were immediately killed, strangled or hanged. It is known that after the liberation of the camps, the bodies of female couples were completely torn to pieces, and they were mutilated to such an extent that it was almost impossible to even establish an identity. In the barracks, women beat their overseers to death with their feet, with boards torn from the bunks. They were drowned in vats or sinks with water. Many had their heads smashed. Some were pierced through with sticks. The days of the massacre was the most terrible for those female couples who either could not escape or did not get lost among other prisoners.